Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and welcome to today's video. Today's video is a get ready with me featuring some new products that I've been loving lately. So if you want to see all the exciting new things that I've been buying and trying and loving, just keep on watching. Starting out with a clean canvas. I just did my skincare routine maybe a couple hours ago, so everything had the time to get nice and settled on my skin. And now I'm going to apply my base. This is a new brand and I've been so excited about them. I've been following the brand founder, one of the brand founders on Instagram for years. Her name is Nikki DeRoost and this is CL. As far as I know, they're only available at Sephora in the United States right now. And I am so impressed with this product. So this is the Tint and Protect SPF 50 Tinted Serum. It's essentially a skin tint, a light to medium coverage, everyday base. Also contains, you know, mineral SPF 50 in there. It's not designed to replace your sunscreen, but it's just like an additional layer of sun protection, which is always great. She m formulated all the products in the brand to be acne safe as well, which I always appreciate. She's somebody that has struggled with acne for a long time and I love following her on Instagram. She always shares her little tips and tricks. I bought shade four, which is described as light to medium with neutral undertones and it's a great shade match for me. It feels really nice and sturdy. It was $44. You do get more than a traditional bottle of foundation. Usually traditional bottles of foundation are about 30 milliliters. This is 38 milliliters. So you get a little bit more. And the only thing that I don't like about it is the packaging. And that's just because I am a clumsy person and stuff that comes in droppers ends up on my clothing at some point. Any foundation that I've ever owned that has come in a dropper has ended up um, staining my clothes. So I have to just be really, really careful. But that's literally the only negative I can find about this product. I've been loving it so far. It looks beautiful. It wears beautifully throughout the day. In terms of application, I like to just uh, apply it as the founder intended. So Nikki drops it directly on her face and then blends it out with her fingers first. So I kind of just follow her directions, but you can do, you know, you can drop it on your hands first. You can drop it, you know, on a brush, on a sponge. You can, you can apply this a multitude of different ways. The texture is beautiful. It has a really perfect amount of coverage for me. This is the perfect amount of coverage that I want in an everyday base. My skin is still shining through, but it's enough coverage to take care of redness and pigmentation. Glow, but it's not greasy, it's not heavy, it doesn't make me more oily throughout the day. Um, it sits beautifully on top of both uh, my mineral sunscreen and my chemical sunscreen, um, but I do have to say it does look a little bit crusty <laughs> Uh, but everything, that happens with everything. You know when you're wearing a mineral sunscreen and then you're putting foundation on top? At the end of the day, it can get a little bit crusty and dry looking in some areas, but... That's just the name of the game sometimes with these uh, mineral sunscreens. But usually my day-to-day -day sunscreen is chemical. It's the... Um, Skin 1004 Centella Sun Serum. That's kind of like my everyday. Chemical SPF. And it's totally clear on the skin. Um, and this just layers beautifully on top of my, my morning skincare. So first fingers and then Nikki suggests going over everything with a sponge just to make sure that everything is nice and seamless. I get a good eight hours of wear with it. I do need to powder it because I do have oily combination skin, but like I mentioned, it, it doesn't make me more greasy throughout the day. It doesn't feel heavy on my skin at all. And it's just a beautiful everyday tint. It's got like, you know, it's like a little bit more emollient, but it in my personal routine and my personal foundation wardrobe, it kind of, 
fits in the same slot as something like the Fenty Skin Tint, for example. It's not as satin matte as that. This is a bit more emollient, but it's still long wearing and I love products that don't hide my skin, that just make me feel my best, but still quite natural. You can build it up a little bit, so let me do a couple of drops in some spots so you can see how you can build the coverage up. I personally don't like to build coverage up with my base though. I, I'm the type of person that just likes concealer you know, I like a thin layer of base all over and then I just like to use concealer, but in a pinch, it's nice to have a complexion product that can build coverage really nicely on itself. Look at that. For blush, this is the other product that I bought by CL. It's the Blush and Protect Liquid Blush. This also contains mineral SPF 50. I believe there are four shades available and I bought the shade Kirsty, which is described as a warm nude. Again, I wanted um, an everyday kind of blush color that can work with any lip color, that can wor work year round. I like to, again, just kind of follow the makeup artist instructions. I kind of like to see how Nikki applies her product and she usually takes it on the back of her hand and then applies it with a brush. And I think they're going to launch a brush as well that looks really good with these um, with these blushes, but any brush we have will do. This is an old Real Techniques buffing brush, but look at that. So pretty. It sets down, but you still get a glow, but again, it doesn't feel greasy, it doesn't feel sticky, and it's long wearing. This stays on my cheeks all day just looks really nice and fresh and natural. That's the uh, that's the base and that's my uh, initial impression of CL. In terms of shade comparisons, the closest color that I have to the CL blush in Kirsty is actually uh, Tower 28 Magic Hour, which was one of my favorite blushes and it actually just went bad like on me recently. It's, it is really old um, and it just starts to smell really funky. So I'm going to be getting rid of it. And it's nice that now I have um, a replacement and I actually prefer the CL Kirsty shade a little bit more. So you can see here, uh, this is CL Kirsty. And then here is the Tower 28 Magic Hour. So you see Tower 28 is just ever so slightly more peachy it pulls a bit more peachy on my skin. The The difference on the cheeks is negligible, really, and they kind of accomplish the same role in my routine. So, you know, if you are at capacity with cream cheek products, you most certainly don't need another one. You can wait until you use something up or you can wait um, until one of, one of the things you have kind of goes bad and is do a replacement and then get this. In terms of color, they, they kind of accomplish the same thing. When it comes to eyeshadow, obviously I have to give a shout out to the Merit Solo Shadows because if I'm in the mood for just a one and done matte shadow, this is what I've been reaching for. Namely the shades of Ashetta if I want something warm or the shade Social if I'm in the mood for something purple taupey or I mix them together if I wanna get really crazy and I just love them. That soft blurred effect that they have on the eyelids is gorgeous. It's really flattering. A lot of the times if I'm just using a matte eyeshadow all over the lid, sometimes it can look a little bit dry. Um, but with these, there's just that really beautiful soft blurring effect and they're very long wearing. So impressed by them. Really, really love them. So that's what I've, what I've been reaching for if I'm in the mood for a matte one and done. I just wore these in my last video, so I'm going to wear something else today because this is something I'm equally as excited about and it's um, one of the new Clay de Peau eyeshadow quads. If you've been following me for a while, you will probably know how much I loved my old Clay de Peau eyeshadow quad. This was it right here. This is in the shade 303 Baby Universe. This is what it was called. And it's funny because I was planning on doing a video about you know, makeup that I would repurchase first if I lost everything. And this would have been my eyeshadow pick. Like this is my like holy grail eyeshadow product, but now it's discontinued because Clay de Peau has 
reformulated and re invigorated their eyeshadow quads. So this is the old, this is the new. The colors are not the same, obviously, but the formulas are new and improved. And I didn't want to get the same shades, so I got something a little bit warmer. This is number seven, Starlight Splendor. I am really, really loving it. I mean, I was expecting to love it. I am a big fan of Clay de Poe eyeshadows. I think they are so beautiful. It's easy, it's buildable, and again, it's that really flattering, easy to blend, soft sheen, and it's something that I appreciate the older that I get. So the new quads and the old quads were all designed to be refillable. So you buy the eyeshadow quad separately, and then you buy the compact for the eyeshadows. And here comes my first complaint, because this was the old compact that I had for my old um, you know, Clay de Poe eyeshadow quad and it fit in beautifully. But if you buy one of the new quads, the new quads are not compatible with the old packaging, even though you get the exact same amount of eyeshadow. It's not like you get more, you know, the, the weight at the back, the weight is still six grams. So they haven't given you more eyeshadow. They just changed the configuration and um, now they're making you buy another compact and they're more expensive. I ended up just buying like the refill pan of this. It just comes in this little plastic container, but it would have been nice for the new formula to be compatible with the old casing because you would think that would be the more sustainable option. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So I will have to just buy a new case for this at some point if I, if I want to. The new eyeshadow formula is more creamy. It's, it's beautiful. There's zero fallout. It's more creamy. It's very, very flattering. It's got that beautiful, subtle clay de Poe shimmer that is just, it just looks like you have a naturally dewy eyelid. I wanted something that I could just use every single day, no matter the season. I can use every single color in here. It's it's an easy throw on look. These are expensive. The, the new quads are more expensive than the old quads. The old quads, um, I remember it was $55 for the shadows and now, the price has gone up. Now this is $75 just for this, which is crazy. It's a lot of money. And is this going to change your life? Absolutely not. Um, if you are a fan of luxury beauty, if you are a fan of, of Clay de Poe eyeshadows like I am, will you love it? I think so. I think it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, high quality. They designed this shade to be a primer, but I've used it I mean, I've used it as just regular eyeshadow as well. This this shade does feel a little bit more creamy than the others. Um, so the brand suggests ap applying this with like a finger or a sponge applicator, kind of like as a primer all over the lid. And then you can apply all the other shades on top. So I'm just going to take the brown shade and just very softly carve out my eye. These shades are just really, really buttery, really soft. They remind me of the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadows a little bit in that there is that creamy quality to them. They are supposed to be skincare infused. So that's the, maybe that's why they're more expensive. That's like the, the new generation of eyeshadows. That's the main difference compared to the old eyeshadow formula. In terms of pigmentation, I'd say it's the same as the old eyeshadow quad formula. It's that beautiful, soft, buildable formula that I love from the brand. But yeah, these definitely feel more creamy. Again, rem reminiscent of the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadows, but a bit easier to build than the Lisa Eldridge. Like they feel, I love the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadows too, but these feel like ugh, just a tiny bit tiny bit nicer in my opinion. Now I'm going to take this uh, rosy gold shade and just sweep it all over the lid. Then I'm going in with that brighter primer shade and putting it in the inner corner. The primer shade, it's still it's like a cream to powder texture. It's more creamy than the other shades, but it, I wouldn't call it a cream shadow. And then I'm going to take the darker brown shade. I'm just going to line 
my lashes with it really quickly. Just doing like a soft smoky liner. Powdering my T-zone with this absolutely gorgeous loose powder. This is from Florasis. Florasis is a luxury beauty brand from China, and this is their gorgeous peach blossom powder. This is in shade number 07. It's slightly tinted. They also have a translucent one. This reminds me of the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. It's that really, really, really fine um, texture, and it has really nice oil control, so it comes in a cushion compact almost, and this is a mesh um, sifter, and uh, it comes with this super, super luxe powder puff, and that's how you get, you get the powder. So I like that it's loose powder, but it's almost like an oppressed compact, and this has really good oil control. So I like to press this in my T-zone where I know my oils like to come out to play. For lips, my go-to combo has been the Farah Homidi Lip Liner in the shade Minky. This is so good. If you like the Victoria Beckham 02 Lip Definer, this is almost identical to that one, but the formula is like a tiny bit better. I find this more long wearing. So give this a try after you use up your Victoria Beckham Lip Liner and let me know what you think because on me, this lasts longer and you can buy this brand exclusively of Violet Grey, which is one of my favorite places to shop for luxury beauty. They have really cool brands. So I've just been into applying this minky lip liner all over. And then on top, I've just been doing this clear lip balm. This is the Rode Peptide Lip Treatment. This is a clear lip balm with a glossy finish and this is in their uh, I think this is like a limited edition flavor, the strawberry glaze flavor. And let me tell you, this road lip treatment is totally, totally living up to the hype for me. I remember I tried really hard to buy this product when the brand first launched, but it just kept selling out so fast. And that's one of my pet peeves and that actually puts me off from buying from a brand. I just hate it when they launch something and everything, there's like this whole craze and everything sells out in a minute and it's like a stressful experience trying to check out. I hate that. That's like, that's, that's such a turnoff for me. So I kind of, after I tried, <laughs> after like during the initial craze, after I kept trying and failing, I getting my hands on this lip treatment, I just kind of forgot about it. And then the brand actually sent this to me in, um, in PR a couple weeks ago. And I put this on and I was like, okay, I get it. It's, it's beautiful. It's a perfect, it's like, thick and cushiony, but not too thick. Like it's thin enough for daytime, but it's still substantial. It's not sticky. The flavor is really, really nice. Like it tastes sweet and it has that strawberry glazed donut type of scent, which is really delicious. And it's not too heavy. It's not too, it's not synthetic either. So I'm definitely going to be repurchasing this, checking out some other flavors because this is a handbag essential for me now. I love, love, love it. And I especially love the way that it looks with um, a nice neutral lip liner. And I saw that they're launching tinted versions of this too soon. So that's exciting. Totally, totally impressed, pleasantly surprised by this uh, treatment. Like it totally, totally lives up to the hype. It's a really great everyday lip balm. It's, it's fun, you know? It's just one of those products that you can throw in your bag and it's like a little fun moment when you're applying it throughout the day. Cause you know, the, the packaging is cute and it smells really good and it actually delivers really nice nourishment and hydration on the lips. And with that being said, that's it. I'm ready, I'm ready for the day. These products have just been making me really happy. They've been doing it for me lately. Um, we have that luxurious dewy eye kind of, um, kind of look going on to the eyelids thanks to the new Clay de Peau eyeshadow quad. Do have to say one thing because I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but you know, just in the excitement of everything, the new Clay de Peau eyeshadows have fragrance to them. They smell like Clay de Peau. It's like clean floral scent that's in all other Clay de Peau products and it's significant because the old eyeshadows didn't smell like anything. And as always, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll catch up with you there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a really great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.